This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In this lesson, let's look at making a slightly more complex selection using a pen tool. I'll tell you what, let's do it in a rather novel way. Open up Kerpalu Blues right here. Well, what we're going to do is use a derivative of the pen tool. So I want you to come down here, and underneath your pen tool, you have something called the freeform pen tool. This will only work, understand, if the object that you're drawing has a distinct edge. Now the edge is on that flower right there, and I think that would probably work. Let's make that a little bit bigger. I'll use my zoom tool. Nothing wrong with making that bigger. That's about right. Go back to the tool, but I want you to turn on something before you use it. Magnetic, right there. What the magnetic option does is it helps the tool lock in to what it perceives as an edge. So I guess you could say it gives us an edge on that flower. Now I will admit that it's probably going to make a more complex anchor point type selection than I would if I did this myself. But you're talking about the difference between maybe 5 and 10 minutes and maybe 30 seconds, so we should at least give it a try. Come over here and get on the edge somewhere, you know, find a spot. Click and drag and start moving around the image. Now it's kind of hard to see, but it is actually drawing and staying on the edge. This particular feature, in my opinion, has gotten better and better with each version of the program that had a magnetic option. It really does a pretty good job. Come down to here, wait for the circle to appear, and then click to close the shape off. Now if we go to paths, you can see there it is. Actually, let me do this. Let me turn off Kerpalu Blues for a second, and you can see it. It actually did a pretty good job of making that selection. Now that we've got it, let's go into our layers, select Kerpalu Blues copy. Now I have the original because I want you to use this image again in another lesson. And in case you forget to save it so you don't have to do it again, I actually have what we just did here in finished. But we'll work with this one right here. Let's go ahead and select it and go down here. And here's the mask button. Hold down the control key and click the mask button. And that's actually not that bad. Now, there are a few options when you're working with vector. Not a lot but there are a few. Double click on the mask and it opens up the properties and you are in, as you can see right here, a vector mask. You have two major options here that we can work with. That's density. That's the density of the mask that it made. So if we turn this down, think of it like opacity. If for whatever reason you want to bring it in like that, you can. The other one is feather. Now feathering on a vector might seem strange, but you can do a little bit of feathering. And if I turn that up just a little bit, maybe I want more of a softer edge, I suppose, and I can do that if I want to. And you can see the softness beginning to appear. So you've got those two options. You've got more with a regular mask, but you've got the ability to use that free form tool with the magnetic option to draw some complex shapes, save you some time, and once you've created and then converted it into a vector mask, you do have a couple of options over here that you can work with. Now this button down here converts it into a selection. This button, if you click it, makes it permanent. We now have that as an object, so I'm going to press undo. This one is a show hide. And this one says, I don't want that, throw it away. Vector masks with the freeform pen tool are doable if you've got an edge for it to hang on to. On to the next.